Okay, uh, my name is Chuck Wilcox. I work at MathWorks. I'm the Boston C++ uh, Meetup organizer. And today I'm gonna present about uh, zero overhead compiler pessimization. Um, I can think of at least three cases where you would wanna do this. Um, the first one is atomic operations, uh, where you're telling the compiler not to do certain optimizations that would interfere with inter-process communication. Um, and anyone who's used the standard atomic library this is effectively what you're telling the compiler to partially do. Um, the other case is uh, the new attribute likely and unlikely on branches. You're actually telling the compiler to do something that it thinks is against its understanding of what's the best thing for the system performance. Um, but I'm not here to talk about either of those two today. I'm here to talk about uh, benchmarking. Usually when you're doing micro benchmarks, um, the compiler can kind of do tricks on you to make you think you're measuring something you're not. Um, specifically, um, when we write micro benchmarks, we write a little snippet of code that really doesn't affect the rest of the state of the program. And therefore, the optimizer, when it goes through, it says, hey, it's not changing anything, I'm just gonna get rid of the whole thing. Uh, additionally, if it's not doing side effects in the abstract state machine sense of the word, it's not interacting with file system or other things, it can say there's no effect. So most of the micro benchmark frameworks out there have um, different ways to inject uh, calls into your code to make it look like you're doing a read or a write and that the compiler is not going to be able to get rid of, it, uh, rid of on you. Uh, so these are a couple from Google, uh, Facebook, uh, and Celero. Um, but let's see if we can take a look at what's really going on. And here we go. All right, down to 90 seconds. Awesome. All right, so... Um, All right, so we go to Compiler Explorer and we try to write the world's simplest um, benchmarking program. Um, we have an int, we get the clock time, we increment it, we get the clock time, we subtract the two and we return. Uh, and if you look at the assembly, uh, we have the, the zero initial value, here's the add of one, and the rest of the math is just stack operations. But for those who might have been paying attention, it wasn't actually optimizing, and when you turn the optimizer on, all the code went away, except for your two calls to the clock time. That is not what we wanted. So, um, I don't have a lot of time to explain these, but, ah, uh, fail. All right, so um, if we put in a fake call to read after we're done timing, you'll notice that uh, one magically appears in a register, but we don't actually have the increment. So we have to add yet another call. And now we actually get the add to show up in between the two uh, calls to time. So, first one, okay. Um, anyway, uh, the moral is uh, this is actually hard to do correctly, uh, and if you're ever doing benchmarking, um, these are some of the issues you're gonna run into. Uh, thank you very much.